I'm a proprietor of a neighborhood bar here in Washington, D.C. called The Big Board. We've been open up for about 10 years now, thanks to fantastic customers and my great coworkers. Um, we've always been a place where everybody is welcome. In December of 21, the mayor of Washington, D.C. implemented emergency orders that required us to check people's personal medical records and mask our servers. Did a little soul searching and decided that we weren't going to do that. We were not going to participate. Um, my servers are not second-class citizens that need to wear their masks when nobody else is wearing one around them eating and drinking, and we are not agents of the government. Uh, the reaction from the city was swift and severe. Inside of three weeks, my liquor license, my business license, and my health department license were removed. And given the emergency nature of how these orders were implemented, we were not given the right to appeal. Right here in the capital city of the United States of America, without a vote under the guise of an emergency order, we were not given the right to appeal. That's just not how our government of the people, for the people, and by the people is supposed to work. It's un-American. Uh, could we have complied? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but I have to be able to look myself in the mirror and like what I see. I, thankfully, I still can, and I do. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful, with your all's help, that the big board's going to reopen. I really am. I think it's going to happen. Uh, but um, I don't know. It's a risk. I may lose my business. I've already lost my life savings. Um, but I will not now nor ever participate in government-sanctioned discrimination of any kind. It's immoral. It's just immoral. Um, and not only are these mandates immoral, they're also illegal. And to that end, my fantas fantastic lawyer here, Mr. Robert Alt from the Buckeye Institute, fantastically smart, really, really, really brave. He's going to speak to you guys for a little bit. Oh, yes. Do you need the mic? And as you can see, I'm extraordinarily proud to represent Eric, who has taken a, taken a stand on this issue. D.C. ended its vaccine mandate for restaurants on February 15th, and yesterday was the last day of the mask mandate in the city. Restaurants across the city are open, and they're no longer checking vaccine IDs, and yet the big board remains closed. Why? Because Mr. Flannery, a Navy veteran, was singled out simply because he spoke up and said everyone is welcome. This is only possible because D.C. has operated under a state of emergency for two years. Two years. That's not a state of emergency. That's as long as a full term of Congress. Mm -hmm. By renewing and stacking these emergency orders, one on top of the other, uh, they've been able to exceed the 90-day limit, uh, and D.C. government has functionally evaded the requirements of the Home Rule Charter that ensure that Congress can conduct meaningful oversight over D.C. laws. D.C. law also, as Eric mentioned, prohibits any appeal, essentially closing the courthouse doors during the state of emergency. Accordingly, the Buckeye Institute has filed multiple demand letters and motions for reconsideration with the D.C. agencies that have suspended Mr. Flannery's operating and liquor licenses. We deeply appreciate your support in exercising oversight over the D.C. government, which has issued regulations that have financially crushed small businesses like the big board during this pandemic. All right, and uh, with Robert's uh, statement there, I've got a couple questions. Uh, over the last two years, during both Republican and Democratic administrations, uh, governors, mayors, and other public officials throughout this country have allowed unelected bureaucrats to impose inane and arbitrary rules which systematically rob hardworking Americans of their livelihoods and civil liberties. What are you going to do to make sure these band-aids can never again be imposed? And what oversight can you exercise over an unchecked D.C. mayor and city council which have enforced these unlawful rules under the pretext of a two-year-long emergency that otherwise shields them from congressional review? Well, appreciate all of those questions. And again, thank you for your service. And uh, to answer, I know Kevin Hearn, as a business person and member of Congress, member of the Ways and Means Committee, has been working on a number of these fronts. Eric, I want to I wanna say to you... Uh, I had the fortunate or unfortunate opportunity to be at your restaurant the last night you were open. And uh, I say that with a heavy heart. I mean, I really do. I, I'm, I, if I 
If I wasn't standing in front of a bunch of cameras, I'd be crying right now. I'm almost crying right now as it is because I know how hard you work, man. I've been there. And to, wow, to see the government shut you down just because you want freedom, the freest nation in the world, the freest nation in the world, and you're shut down by a D.C. mayor because you challenged her. That's what, that's what man, that's what this country's made of. That's what it's made of. You know, it, what's really troubled me is that is how this administration, how these Democrats have looked at business owners in America as if we don't care about people, whether it's our internal customers, meaning our employees, or our external customers, the one that come in and buy your Big Mac. I mean, I'm sorry, I had Big Mac, that's me, I'm sorry. Your, your hamburgers. Uh, but, you know, when I see that, it really gives me a heavy heart when I see what happened. Because I can only think of really bad things like communist countries, as I mentioned earlier. And I, I thought we were bigger than that. But the problem is Americans are speaking up. They're seeing that. Because I was in your shoes not too long ago. And what I mean by your shoes, because you shared this with me that night. And you said, Congressman, I'm going to get this pretty close. You said, Congressman, I never really cared about politics. I served my time in the Navy. I got out. I just wanted to do a, create a job, create a business. And I created this, and I just work hard every day. It was only when government kind of took what I had that I'd worked so hard for and took that from me. And now I had to either give up or get involved, and I'm getting involved. And i got to tell you, that's where I was. When I saw time and time again that the biggest competitor that I had was not other restaurants, but was the federal government, I had the opportunity to say, let's get involved. I've had countless people, just as I'm sure you have, is why do you want to get in this fight? It's, maybe you can't save yourself, but you can save so many others. And I know you have garnered a ton of new friends. You've been on national TV talking about this. And I believe it's stories like yours is why we're seeing this great turnaround in America today. You know, as it, as it speaks to the, the oversight of the federal government here in D.C., it's broken. We've seen what happened with, you know, stuff as crazy as the statues that were taken down, the destruction of this great city that's under the purview of the House of Representatives of the, of the, of the Congress be completely decimated of what it indicates and what it shows to people around the world, the stripping away of freedom. This arbitrary use of power, and I'll give you just a classic example. If you look around the room today, there is not a single mask on of anybody in this room. You couldn't have done that yesterday just yesterday. You know why? Because all the world, all the national TVs, the global TVs are going to be on the president tonight. And miraculously, the science said on Sunday, we didn't need masks today. That's how arbitrary it is. I believe it was like two days after or three or four days after your restaurant was closed down that it was okay to do exactly what you were doing. That's correct. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? A man who gave 10 years of his life to the military who put his, all of his savings in a business to only be taken away by a dictator in D.C. It's absolutely uncalled for. It's a disgrace. It is a lack of what we are known for around the world. And we've got to stop that. The American people are speaking up. And it's not just Republicans speaking up. It's Democrats and independents who have had enough of this regime of the Socialist Democrats. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We really enjoyed having you. Yeah. And I hope to have you back soon. I really do. <laughs> That's really great. Do. Yeah. Thank you.